During season six of Gumball, there's an episode where the main character's mom meets up with her parents that she hasn't seen in years. The last time they saw each other in person was a huge fight, and this time was nothing short of that, leading to a violent and brutal argument that lasts until the very end of the episode, and leads to them separating again as this sort of painful cycle continues. The episode right before that is about a girl face palming so hard that her brain begins to shrink. The episode before that is about fan fiction and shipping being brought into the real world. I don't see how this day could get any weird and here we go. I've always appreciated Gumball for its versatility, you know? It's one of those shows that can be silly and goofy whenever it wants, but still have the ability to pull you in close for those emotional moments and lock you in. After the goofiness of season one is when they really started to experiment with getting a little bit more serious and diving in deep to the inner feelings and the drama between their characters, and the parents were probably the best example of this. As the show went on, we basically got to see the entirety of Nicole and Richard's life and how they formed Gumball into who he is, and it just feels like such a beautiful journey, which I feel makes them one of the most likable couples to ever be in cartoons. And it wasn't until season five and six where we met two other characters that were really integral to Nicole's relationship and why she is the way she is. Hey, wait, before we get into that, I, I need one favor, right? I've been looking at my analytics. I need you to do one thing for me. I need you to enjoy the video. I say it every time, okay? It's all I ask. Season six, episode 16, the parents. We're thrust immediately into a supermarket fight scene where the kids are trying to get candy and snacks into the cart and Nicole has to try to defend the point with her five-star combos. At first when I was watching this, I thought this was sort of just a random gag that they threw in there, but I find it cool that this whole first section is mainly about introducing Nicole. Of course, we already know she can fight and her power levels are crazy, but also right after this, she tries to find a cheaper and healthier alternative to the food that the kids want. <laughs> What's she doing? Sniffing out a bargain. Your mom's family always had the super ability to save money. Aisle 13. <laughs> Corn beef. Man, this brings back too many memories. Like, my mom always had to save, so whenever we went to the supermarket, we couldn't get any Fruit Loops. So I just had to settle for colored holes. Didn't get any Frosted Flakes. All I had were sugar slivers. Shows Nicole to be the main discipline of the family, right before we meet the people who made her that way. Meet Daniel and Mary, the two that raised Nicole on some horrid Henry levels of parenting. This is the first time we've seen them in person. The last time we saw them was in season five. During a flashback, Nicole gets right into her karate course, getting her temper and anger issues from her dad and competitive drive from her always judgmental mother. Nicole, we need to talk about your report card. But I got straight A's. Not here. Gender. Uh, yeah, F because I'm female. Being a girl is not an excuse. Hey mom, hand me that paper so I can shove it up your ass. I'm fighting everybody. Only one of us knows Marshall arts in this car. I'm gonna throw some high kicks on the highway. Don't get me started. What we also know is that her parents didn't really approve of any life decisions that she made on her own. They tried to deny her from seeing her boyfriend or doing anything she really wanted to. They were treating parenting like a game of the Sims. Just trying to control Nicole's every move and if she didn't do what they told him to, they'd throw her in a pool and delete the ladder. <laughs> So as soon as she turned 18, Nicole split up from her parents to go and rebuild and start a new life with Richard, and this is the first time she's seeing them again in person in 20 years. So the kids think it would be a great idea to have them over for dinner. And I really love this ride they have in the car, because Nicole starts to worry, get anxious, and start doubting her family right before she's about to meet the people that are coming to try and take her away from all of it. And right when she gets to that tipping point, the one person to pull her back down to earth, like always, is Richard. Come on, let's give this another chance. Okay. Just promise me you'll be good this time. I can't just promise that. Why won't you open up? There's so much bad history between us. I mean, we stopped talking over 20 years ago. Why are you always so hard inside? I guess it's a way to protect myself, but you're right. I'll try my best to be open. Thank you, Richard. Uh... Anytime. Even if he was trying to risk up a beef can, Richard's always able to come through and be a great husband. So the dinner starts and they finally have this emotional conversation where they start laying out why they actually love each other and how- I lied, it's awkward as hell. So in an attempt to cheer everyone up and try to chop up the atmosphere, Gumball goes in and tries to lay out a joke. I like my coffee the way I like jokes about the way I like my coffee. I don't. <laughs> Oh, 
that's the second worst that joke ever went down. They turn on the emotional fire hose and Nicole and her parents start violently throwing plates and having a screaming match. And Richard explains to the kids that they're fighting because, well, they don't really know who's in the wrong. They keep yelling and screaming about things that have happened since that separation instead of being content or talking about anything in the present. You know it's bad when it's so obvious that even Richard can see it, but the two are just so blinded by hate that they just go at it and go at it with no goal in mind. So the rest of the family just decides to hear out both parties on why they're mad at each other. From Nicole's side of this, it's really easy to understand why she's stressed and mad, being confronted with the people who were the reason she was casted away in the first place as they try to sink the ship that she's built for herself just because they think she could do better. You have always been disappointed in me. Only because we loved you. No, because you always had insane expectations for me. Nicole, from the moment she was born, was a tryhard. Congratulations to both of you. It's a... Uh... <laughs> CEO? They wanted her to become a president doctor lawyer, the next LeBron, not this overworked mom with an underpaying job and a pretty much dysfunctional family. Not to mention her man-child husband. The reason why her parents hate Richard so much was shown in that season 5 episode I was talking about earlier, so let's talk about that in detail. Season 5 episode 6, the choices! During one particularly rough dinner where the whole kitchen is chanting for the food and Richard's not really helping, Nicole finally breaks and questions what made her life like this. How did things get this bad and uncoordinated and she looks at the man that was responsible for it all, and has a flashback to how she first met Richard, where she had to speed out of her parents' car and run to her karate tournament. But as she ran, everyone wanted something from her. Her parents wanted her to win, didn't even say they loved her. And remember, I know, I know, I love you too. No, I was gonna say second place is first place for losers, but yeah, that too. Mom, there is no way you're that locked in that you can't even say three words back to me. No, 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 it's cool, it's cool. I'm already booking the retirement home, so it's fine. All the guys she came across either wanted her romance or her to submit to their cause or just objectified her. And the one guy she ended up meeting that didn't want anything. Uh, hello? I'm Richard. <laughs> Nicole. Richard didn't think Nicole had to change who she was at all or do anything that he wanted her to do. He actually gave her a lot of things for free that no one else could, making her laugh, making her think about her life, and for the first time, question why is she doing what she's doing if she doesn't want to do it. What would you do if you were me? If I had done everything you've done, sleep till I'm 40. <laughs> I mean, what should I do with my life? Hmm. Maybe start living it? Richard was the first person to make Nicole feel human, or I guess a pussycat. And despite her parents' disapproval of Richard, she decided to go with him to build a new life as they slowly realized that they were perfect for each other, leading to a magical night where, uh-oh, that's a baby, becoming pregnant with Gumball out of wedlock, which basically means when a baby is born to two parents who aren't married. And this is something that's looked down upon and something that Nicole's parents definitely wouldn't approve of, but they ended up making it work. Nicole's parenting style, which we see in season 4, episode 20, The Origins, part 1, started off kind of strict, definitely way more strict than Richard, but also you notice here and throughout the entire show, Nicole never wants to try and shove her kids to do anything that they really don't want to do or push them down any path in life that they don't think is right for them. For the most part, she just makes sure that they stay healthy and don't die, while Richard on the other side is trying to get them to be imaginative and free, and the two form this really good dynamic and bond with the family to raise the happiest children they can. But but Richard is also a fat ass bum. So our parents don't really care about all that. All they care about is getting Nicole with someone in a higher tax bracket. What else was I supposed to do? You always disapproved of Richard. You never thought he was good enough for me. That's not true. And as argument continues and really gets into it, we start to see different memories from different points of the family's lives leading up until the present, with the beef starting since childhood when Nicole's parents put her into every elective at the same time. It's a fail, Dr. Nicole. Why? It wasn't a karate match. It was a drama club rehearsal of Madame Butterfly. <laughs> that was a karate. And then leads into when she was a teenager with Nicole's anger issues and her sneaking out of the house to see Richard. You stole our car to see your boyfriend that landed in court. Okay, I'm <laughs> and then a back and forth about things that happened while the two were separated for those 20 years. Is that why you sent Richard and I divorce papers for our first anniversary? No, that was because you sent me retirement home leaflets for my 50th birthday. That's because you tried to ship Richard to Guatemala! 
You have always been disappointed in me. Remember that finger painting? Well, maybe it all comes back to the. Nothing was ever enough. It's been years fixed. What about the time? No, that was after. 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 After. I don't remember. They get to a point where they've aired out everything that they can remember. Why can't you just make peace? We were at peace, Darwin. Separately. But still, that feeling of hatred still persists, and they almost continue the cycle. <sighs> okay. I know this is the cheapest, dirtiest kind of emotional manipulation, but there's too much on the line here, so... Gumball has one of his best moments in the show, and even admits before he does it that it's kind of corny. He starts singing a song about the truth of the situation here. Ten thousand reasons to give up Too many words that piled up as Nicole picks up the shards of her broken mug, she realizes the shards of her relationship with her parents are still scattered across years of fighting. Because think about it, why is she even picking up this broken mug? Because if she doesn't, there's a chance that nobody else will, and they'll just lie there becoming an even bigger problem and might hurt people in the process. And both parties just didn't realize for so long that that's what was happening with them. Also, there's this look that Nicole shares with her mother as she walks out the door. You can really tell how much Nicole's mom cares for her. Not to mention she's the only half of the parent that said out loud that they love Nicole, but it seems that her perception of what love and success is is muddled and it's keeping the two distance. But you refuse to try and mend your broken past before the end. Gumball sets the tone immediately and gets pretty real, making it clear he's talking about when they don't have any time left. Death. Time is a douchebag. He keeps running and running and going. It doesn't stop for anybody like he's David Goggins. The three can't keep going at it like this like they have all the time in the world. If it's too hard to forgive, then just give. Let go of the weight that won't let you live. If it's too hard to forgive, then just give. As the truth of the problem starts to weigh down on both parties, they see little remnants of history all around them that they never really took time to appreciate. They were so blinded by anger, these memories began to fade away under their noses. Why keep playing this sad game of who should really take the blame? The memories will fade away. They're growing further. When you take away the memories, good and bad, and you look at this situation, you have a family that was split apart by differing opinions of what they wanted their future to look like, leading to decades of back and forth, and it all led up to an ending where a girl never gets to show her parents that she came out of it okay, happy, and successful, but also a mother and a father never getting to see their child become a happy adult. It's the one thing all parents want, but some are unfortunately never able to see that. You want the stream to change its course? Before it floods you with remorse. Even if one of them took the blame, it wouldn't change anything. The memories would still be there. The anger would still be there. And just because someone takes the blame for doing something doesn't necessarily mean that they feel remorse for doing that thing. So it just leads to more anger, more pushing of other lifestyles, more arguing, more of the cycle. You only need to hit the brakes to free yourself of your mistakes. Before time runs out, all they need to do is hit the brakes. And thankfully, they all realize that this wouldn't be an ending that either would want. That song has ended up being one of my favorites of the season and the whole show, and I'm surprised such a mature song came out of Gumball of all people. Well done, Gumball. You really summed up their relationship with each other and helped them reconnect. <laughs> that wasn't about them. That was about the Christmas presents they owe us. How much does your past self control who you are now? That question kept on popping into my head as I saw them going back and forth with each other, and I feel like that's what it was trying to communicate. For a lot of people, when a terrible thing happens to their past self, they might start to feel like it was somewhat their fault. When whoever's fault it is doesn't matter now, those thoughts will just bring up anger, and the only thing that really matters now is healing and moving forward. Because at the end of the day, if we give our past selves too much power and we spend all our time in the present looking back, then we might just end up backing straight off into a cliff and 
That said, the fact that Nicole's parents are even still alive and able to talk to her is a blessing, and it just shows how the past put a pretty thick blindfold on all of them and they were unable to see this. I think that message is pretty beautiful and important to so many people nowadays that can't help but feel nostalgic or wanting to go back to when times were more simple or thinking about how successful they could have been if they just did this and this and this. I really think this is one of the best episodes that they've put together dialogue-wise, and all I have left to say is, well, you aren't your past self. To prove it, take a deep breath in and take a deep breath out. Now, who just did that? It wasn't you from years ago. It wasn't that little nagging voice in your head telling you what you could be. That was you. And while you still have time, you gotta embrace you. Oh, thanks for watching. If you liked it, you can like subscribe or something. I don't, I don't really care. Every Friday at 3 p.m. PST, I do a live stream on this channel called Indie Live, where I go over all kinds of cool indie and animation stuff that I found throughout the week. And I play a few games with chat, so if you're interested in that, you should sub and join the Discord. Anyway, nobody cares about outros, bro, so I gotta go. I'll see y'all later. Peace, hey. peace. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. If you like RT60, you should like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. If you like RT60, you should like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.